recently many of you sent in your automations and I was blown away by how creative you are. There are so many things I would have never thought to do and it's fun to be inspired by your ideas. The one thing that shocked me the most was that the automations in this video happened in eight different countries from around the world and that's so cool. There's some great ideas so let's just jump right in. Starting with the first one from Norway. This is Thurston, and this lighting automation in the kitchen is so seamless. You might not even catch what's happening. When I first watched this video, I was like, oh, motion sensors turning on lights? Nice. But then when I actually read what was happening, I was very impressed because there's way more that's going on. When someone walks into the kitchen, the lights turn on to 50% brightness using a hue motion sensor. Then this is the cool part. Under the kitchen counters are four multi-purpose sensors to detect vibration. If someone is cooking or using that part of the counter, the lights turn on brighter in that section or zone. Just like it does right there, it's amazing. Now you can see better while cooking or if the top drawer is open as well. The lights are from Ikea and are using this 30 watt driver. Everything is connected to SmartThings with some web core for the logic. I definitely underutilize vibration sensors and I love how everything changes by just doing your day to day activities. I could easily see myself adding a vibration sensor under my desk to automatically turn on the lights when I start working. There are so many ways to implement this. The next automation comes all the way from Finland. Lasaki automated his 3D printer, which is the Ender 3 Pro. To run automations, a Raspberry Pi running Octoprint is connected. That way, when the 3D printer is finished, it can run an automation. The Tuya LED light strips on top change to green, and all the Google Home speakers make an announcement. Incoming broadcast. It says, your 3D print is ready. This is really useful because these 3D printers can take hours before they're done printing. So you might want to start another print soon after. They're using Home Assistant to integrate with Octoprint and Assistant Relay, which is how they broadcast to the Google Home speakers for the announcement. Can we just appreciate how futuristic this is? You're having your smart assistants announce throughout your house that something has been 3D printed. This is something you would have seen in like Back to the Future 2. And I've been wanting a 3D printer for a long time, but this might finally push me over the edge to get one. And that Charmander looks pretty awesome. Next up is an automation from Andrew. It's a mix of old school with new technology. Each of his cassette tapes have an NFC tag in them, and when scanned on the phone, it starts playing that album on an Echo device. I think this is really creative. It's a great way to take a physical collection and repurpose it. And I'm sure it took a while to set up, but you can't put a price on that cool factor. Andrew is using Home Assistant that scans an NFC tag and plays music using Alexa Media Player. It was created as a blueprint, so it should be really easy to implement if you want to do this yourself. NFC tags are so useful and inexpensive, and seeing this automation makes me think of more ways I could hide NFC tags and trigger automations. Also, I have to mention how much good music Andrew has. Metallica, Queen, Led Zeppelin. The next automation is from Jacob, who's from Georgia in the USA. When there's a tornado warning from the National Weather Service, alerts are automatically made throughout the house. Shoot a tornado warning for your area. Lights are flashing red, and a custom noise Jacob uploaded is played on repeat, which I thought was a nice touch. Jacob is using the National Weather Service API to make rest calls and get the data for his county and local zone. I'll link the guide on how to set this up yourself in Home Assistant. To play custom sounds, an MP3 was uploaded to the www folder and then was referenced by calling the Play Media Service. I used to live in Texas and the tornado warnings would freak me out. I didn't want to get hit in the middle of the night when I was asleep. So if I were still there, I would have definitely set something like this up. Next up is a really unique automation from Jaren in Toronto, Canada. Instead of having to get up and let the dogs out, the dogs are letting themselves out? This is next level. There's a motion sensor inside that's nice and low for the dog. Then on the outside, there's a pressure sensor mat. That way the dog can go in and out all by themselves. The door also only opens partially for the dog. And when the button is pressed, the door opens all the way. Or it can open using an echo device. 
If you cannot add a doggy door, this is a creative way to let your dogs out. And I hope we continue to see more automated doors because I think they're so awesome. And I know it sounds lazy, but I would definitely use one, especially if I was outside barbecuing. It's too heavy, Daddy. I can't open that. This is using a motor on the sliding door connected to a Wi-Fi relay, which is using eWeeLink to connect it all to the Amazon Echo. Outside is this pressure mat, and Jaren just cut off the alarm part and connected it to the door opener. This next automation is from George, all the way from New Zealand. Picking up the PlayStation controller automatically turns on the TV and the computer down below. I really like this automation because it's so practical. You don't have to go around looking for the TV remote or try to find the on button for the computer in the dark. George is using a Xiaomi contact sensor connected to HomeKit, using a Zigbee dongle and HomeBridge. Then there are two integrations to get the PC and the TV connected to HomeBridge. Of course, you could use something like the Eve contact sensor that works natively with HomeKit, but HomeBridge is a great option if you want to use a lot more devices with HomeKit. The next automation is from Sony in Australia who set up a shower timer. They're using a LifeX bulb that flashes after five minutes to know when it's time to finish showering. Then if the light is still on, it will flash red after two more minutes. This is a great way to not waste water and to stay on schedule, especially since at the end of the shower timer, the light turns off. That is commitment right there but there is a workaround for the light to stay on longer. They're using a Hue smart dimmer switch to turn on the light, but if someone holds down on the dimmer, it will override the countdown and not flash the lights. This was all done inside Node Red. That way it doesn't annoy anyone if they need extra time to get ready in the bathroom. And smart lights are such a great way to get notified and to stay on schedule like this automation, especially in the shower when you have limited options. Next is an automation submitted by Josiah over in Tennessee. This is a goodbye automation that is triggered by a voice command. It stops the morning music that might be playing, turns off all the smart lights and plugs, sets the temperature on the thermostat to away, runs the robot vacuum, and arms the ring alarm system. This is such a useful automation because it's doing so many things that you might forget when you're rushing out the door. And this automation is only using the Amazon app. And you could do all of this if you're using a Google Assistant routine as well, if you're using a different security system. Also, look at this cute little cat. The automations start happening and it's not even phased. It must be highly cultured in home automation. The last automation is from Tim, who has a house over in Thailand with security automations. Using the geofence in SmartThings, the outside gate opens when they are pulling up to their house. Also, the light turns on for five minutes, and then the gate closes after it's been open for three minutes. Inside, there are big Fabaro buttons and multi-purpose sensors on the door. If the door senses vibration late at night, or if the button is pressed twice in a row, all the lights flash red, the AOTech siren goes off, and alerts are sent to the phones. These lights are intense, and I would be out of there so fast. This is a great way to use smart home devices to protect your home. And it's really cool to see automations like this because I don't have a gate in front of my house, but I know some of you do. And it's nice to know that you can automate it similar to a garage door opener. Also, Tim has a motion sensor that can turn on the next Lux light strips under the hand railing of the stairs. This looks great. And if I had stairs in my house, I would go for something like this. Thanks to everyone who sent in automations. It's so much fun to see how you're using automations in your home. And if you want to send in an automation for a future video, that would be great. The instructions are in the description, as well as links and more info for everything in this video. I look forward to seeing your automations. All right, that's the end. Wait, wait, Reed, there's actually another one that just came in. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, let's watch it then. Hello, Reed. Uh, my name is um, Prawl, Prawl Hubert. And I wanted to show you my automation today. This is something that works without internet. It's a flick button. And when you press it, it turns on my studio lights. Nice. Which, um, yeah. I use for no particular reason. Um, anyway, just wanted to say I really like your show, and uh, but not as much as Paul Hibbert. And, and everyone should probably subscribe to him. What? Oh, that's weird. Why would he say that? I mean, yeah, everyone should just go subscribe to Paul Hibbert. It's an amazing channel, and he's never going to let you down. I mean, is that the end of the video? No, I think there's a little bit more. Thank you very much. I, 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 I.
Uh, it's Paul Hibbert. No, that's yes. not Paul. Yes. No, there was no hit thrust or mention of corporate greed. This isn't. This isn't Paul Hibbert. Okay, it's Paul Hibbert. It's not. <laughs>